Hi guys, today I'm going to talk about the importance of replenishment in goal achievement and also about Hemingway and what I have learned from Hemingway about replenishment. So I was thinking about replenishment this week because I had a really great weekend that I and I felt really replenished by it and also I have been working on two books and I yeah so I have been writing or working on my books like six hours a day so it takes a lot of replenishment I'm not working on them six hours straight but I'll work on them for two hours and then I'll do something in between and then another two hours and it's this process of working and replenishment so I wanted to talk about replenishment today and goal achievement so firstly before in the you know, I don't know how long I've been writing for, more than 15 years, but 15 years seriously. I, so in the beginning, I used to write just for one or two hours a day. That's all I could manage. I would, I was living in Switzerland and I would get up and I would work on my book um, and I could only do it for one or two hours a day. First, it was just one hour for a long time, maybe for a year. And then after that, I started to do more like two hours. And then by the end, it took me five years to finish my novel Wanderlust, or seven years. And um, by the end, I was do I could do like three hours at a time in the morning. And I organised my whole life around it so that I would be able to write. And so, what I used to feel is that because I was doing only one or two hours, that I wasn't doing enough and I read some about some I would try to read as much as I could about other authors and one author I remember Jonathan Franzen he wrote Freedom which is a really amazing book and he's a brilliant writer uh, he I think he would write in the morning and then like edit in the evening or in the night and so he did quite a lot of hours or he would write in the day and edit at night something like that and so yeah I would feel like oh okay well I'm not doing enough but then I read about Hemingway who and those guys at that time maybe like um what's his name um Henry Miller as well who I talked about in the video on Anais Nin I those guys back from the 1930s they would write you know and they were on their typewriters for a few hours a day and the rest of the day they would spend replenishing so if you think about replenishing you know I used to be an English as a second language teacher so I love word formation and you know replenishing re means again and plenish like plenty plenty so you replenish so that you have plenty again you know, so you're able to feel your cup, re-energize and uh, able to create again. And if you think about the word recreate, recreation, recreate, so we're creating again. So it's this process of creating and then replenishing. So those guys like Hemingway, they used to write for a couple of hours and, you know, usually they were heavy drinkers as well. So I don't imagine them getting up at like 6 a.m. but uh, they probably started mid-morning and they would write for a few hours and then they would spend the rest of the day going off and replenishing and what they would do is like go to cafes, go to bars, meet some other authors or some artists or other kind of characters that they met in bars or they would just walk around by themselves or have you know fun with friends there was if you watch the movie midnight in paris you get the scene for this you know of all that which is as i said in the uh video i did on Anais Nin that that's my favorite time because i just imagine you know the parties with all the writers and the uh artists and the prostitutes and the brothels and the madams and the circus performers all mingling together a lot of stories, a lot of crazy adventures and a lot of life. So 
they that's how they would replenish and it also would give them something else to write about right because they're inspired by life so you have to live something in order to write too so that's one way to replenish um, but if you're not in Paris in the 1930s and also maybe you know like me I I'm living with metastatic breast cancer so I have to lead a healthy lifestyle you know I can't just be working my ass off and then you know hurting myself in the process and not being healthy I have to have this balance and there was one time I used to be a life coach and one time when I was in Bali uh, it was I, w I had uh, when was it it was about seven years ago I was running a course called Healthy and Powerfully Feminine and I used to run it. First I ran it the first three or four times as a in-person course and then for the, for the fourth one I wanted to run it online the first time. And I went to Bali and I was doing a kind of working holiday and so what I did was I, it was just this really nice mix of you know, I would wake up, I would go for a walk, then I would have breakfast, write in my journal, then I would make a post, maybe send a mailer, then I would go for a massage, then I would relax, then I would maybe make another post, record a video, go for a long walk, explore some things, have some adventures, go out for dinner and maybe all the while I was taking photos and I was you know having experiences that I could then write about in my mailers and in my posts and in my videos so after I so I did that that was in 2016 yeah I was 37 2016 and then I had this my breast cancer metastasized to my brain in a very dramatic event. I wrote the book about it, but it's not out yet. It's coming out in six months. Um, and so after that, when I was recovering, I looked at the way that I used to write, I used to work, and I found it a bit chaotic when I worked in my coaching business. And I, I felt like because it had metastasized that I had done the wrong thing and that I better like learn a more structured and organized way to work which I went off and did and I looked at people like the minimum minimalists or there's a woman called Shannon Abels who wrote the book this um, the simply luxurious life which I haven't read but she had a podcast I think she still does called the simple sophisticate and I would listen to all the podcast that she had the episode she had on like organization and um, simple luxury as well because I didn't have much money at the time so but I knew that I had to love my life in order to put it back together and use the law of attraction so I use the law of attraction effectively so that's what I was doing I was like scheduling and I was doing simple things that made me happy, like scheduling, because actually scheduling actually makes me really happy. Uh, so, uh, but other things as well, like exercising and stuff. But I, I was only doing a little bit of work at a time then, and I was very careful not to f do too much for a long time. But in the last few months before Christmas, I, suddenly had this desire to over over winter I paused the gym because I was just feeling lazy and wanted to walk around my near my neighborhood and didn't really want to drive but at Christmas time I uh, before Christmas time I got this feeling like I wanted to do aerobics again and I used to do these classes like body combat where kicking and punching and um, and uh, other ones, Zumba, I started to enjoy Zumba. So I started doing that and I wanted to join a dance class, my old dance school again this year. So I wanted to get fit for that as well. And so then I started realizing that I actually really enjoyed doing my writing in the morning and then leaving and going for my aerobics class because 
when I left, I'd actually get more ideas, but just gently get some more ideas and get some more perspective on what I was doing. And then I would come back to it and do maybe work some more or save it till the next day, do some other work. And so that's when I started to organize my schedule again, which is a bit of work, a bit of write, um, exercise and work again. And it reminded me of that time in Bali. So that's how I really love to replenish these days is actually through exercise. But as well as that, I really love high quality films and literature and books and even pop culture stuff, but high quality. Uh, and uh, meeting people, talking, parties where you get to hear stories and have some laughs um, or go to the beach, cycle to the beach or uh, just read there or do a crossword, you know, stuff that truly replenishes me. So I'm wondering what your high quality replenishment is so leave me a comment below and let me know what do you do to replenish yourself that is high quality and that helps you to have more so that you can continue and you can also feel relaxed and and able to succeed in life so let me know in the comments below and if you'd like you can like and subscribe to hear more stories and more advice and tips like this on achievement or on different books and authors that I love. So I'll see you next time in a week. Bye!